Today we're going to begin the rust repairs on the 1948 GMC 5 window. Those of you with a keen eye for detail may notice that this is not a 1948 or a 5 window cab, but it is rusty and this is 2022 and things are whatever you say they are. Anyways, we want to keep things pretty fast paced here. so. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly survey the damage here and then we'll just dive right into the repairs and at the end of the video I'll explain what the plan is. So what we have here is a cab which is rusty and dented. See we have our typical cab corner rust and uh, there's more rust at the bottom of this pillar here. And what we have inside here is what's known in the business as a titanic level of rust. What's happened is the metal has actually been replaced with a living organism known as a rusticle, as was named by uh, Dr. Robert uh, Ballard. And this uh, these rusticles have... Uh, become a living entity which has actually replaced the metal entirely and even though it's still the shape of a truck cab the slightest uh, disturbance could cause it to all collapse into itself. So this side has uh, been affected even worse. See all of the rust in here it's completely gone away This is probably the worst one I've uh, tackled to date. That's cool. I've actually never had the one where the hinge is rusted out, but uh, here it is. So Good for the record books. And you can see the floor itself uh, now resembles some sort of tsunami. It's all kind of collapsed and uh, raised up and uh, done some things that aren't very desirable. All this is uh, largely deteriorated as well. Similar situation, it looks like uh, there's metal there, but uh, it's actually just a living organism at this point that uh, is no longer metal. All very upsetting and back here we have a large dent and a rusty cab corner big surprise there get some more perspective on the dent there I think we're gonna make some beautiful memories together when we go to uh, hammer that out oh wow that's not good so, what's happened here is this has broken away from the primary structure of the floor and everything has collapsed and has caused this tidal wave effect in the floor. You can't tell in this maze of destruction here but there's a uh, a brace that runs through here and what the brace is attached to is no longer there and as soon as that happens the whole cab just falls down you can see how this is all the e-brake assembly is all cockeyed now in fact, it's actually, this is the worst one I've ever uh, tackled. It's no longer, it's supposed to go come through here, but that is actually broken away. Um, so, I don't know. What, what I've done here is I've got this, this was a one ton or something like that, and I just chopped down the frame to use it as a jig. But everything is still bolted to the frame. Now, if I was to just, go and lift this off and start repairing it 
the whole cab is going to twist around and sag again but now I have it on the frame so I can at least use the frame as my jig and of course you could brace the thing before you lift it up but what are you bracing you're bracing a crooked body and you're trying to preserve that crookedness well then you're just gonna have to cut the bracing back out to make the repairs so it's kind of pointless to brace anything until at least until it's actually square again and if we're gonna do that then we might as well just build I try to build everything up off the frame even though it's a pain then once we get closer you can lift this off and do any final welding uh, from the bottom that we can't access now and that'll be the way the way that we tend to do these so you might have your own way but uh, these cabs you wouldn't believe them out of flex in them uh, they do get a lot of structure from you know their mounting and the rear mounts actually do have uh, shims in them which play a big part in your door alignment and stuff so all of this is all very critical and that's why like I said uh, not really a good idea to do major repair on these when the cab is not bolted to the frame especially when it's not square you know how are we, we are, what we're gonna have to do here to correct all this this is broken away so what's gonna have to happen is we're gonna have to jack up here and jack all this back up get it all straight again I'm probably gonna just I'm gonna have to replace the floor probably up to here it, it looks solid but it's well stuff looks solid on camera but this is eaten away here nothing left of that by the time you clean that up sandblast it or whatever there there would just be a gaping hole so all needs to be replaced what we're gonna start with though is we're gonna start with this bottom pillar here pillar is kind of the most critical part that's what the door bolts do so we want to make sure we get that we're going to start there i don't know how much of this i'm going to be able to jack up until i get this replaced and once that's done then we can rebuild the front part of the rocker panel all of this in here was originally part of the rocker panel now you can buy a full rocker panel but you can't buy just this front section so we're just gonna have to kind of cobble something together there we do have this panel so that should be a fairly easy replacement so let's get started so before i cut this off i did add just a temporary brace in here because this bottom here is right now literally the only thing that's holding this side of the cab up as soon as I cut that away it's just all gonna want to collapse in on itself uh, which is kind of undesirable so uh, it doesn't hurt to do a little preventative uh, maintenance there I'm gonna have to cut it all out all that bracing out and I'm gonna have to cut all this out but uh, just kind of try to use a little common sense uh, before you uh, start cutting stuff and it'll save you a bunch of time because you know if we lose this shape then we're going to be in uh, in, a, in a lot of trouble another thing i'll do is i'll measure uh probably i guess to these holes in the hinges that's going to be the most accurate i'll measure that so i can get that distance i'm not going to measure to here to these body lines because those might be different so I'm going to pick a known point while well, these these holes the they go into welded in nuts so we know that those are going to be you know a fixed point so we'll use that as our reference to get the new piece in the right position uh, again like I said the this control this body line here could be different so we don't want to put too much faith in that
So, let's better look at uh, the damage there. So you can see the rocker panel here. It was supposed to extend out up to here, but it no longer does. So uh, if we were technically going at this by layer by layer, we would want to rebuild that rocker panel first. But the problem is if I cut out any more of this, it's going to cause more of the structure to collapse, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this first. And that's at least going to get this structure. I can weld it right to here. And then we'll come in from the back side and we'll weld that rocker panel piece in from the back. And uh, that's how we're going we're gonna to make that work. So I'm going to tack weld in the lower post. And as I'm tack welding it, I'm going to constantly be checking and rechecking the measurements. And also that the pillar is straight up and down. Basically every tack I make, I'll constantly recheck it. And I want to get a tack weld in all the major corners or points on it. Once it's all tack welded in at those points, then it can't really go anywhere and then it'll be ready for final welding. good example that uh, just because something appears to be solid doesn't actually mean that it's any good. Decided to just cut this entire section out entirely. Yeah. Salvage this brace. You can see on the back side here this is all butchered here. Somebody's welded in a plate. And this has been welded here. Obviously there's rust, so none of this, none of the, the floor itself is usable, we'll 
make a new floor. You can also see where someone has tried to add shims to the body mount to try to compensate for the damage, which has only actually made it worse. You just have a floor jack holding this up. I also bolted in this brace back into here just to kind of give it some structure again. Otherwise, there's really nothing holding this side of the cab up anymore. Just a quick comparison here. This is how thick the body mount was that I took out. And this is how thick it's supposed to be. So, just another example of humans doing more damage uh, than good with their supposed fixes. Tried to shim it up and all it did was just cause the floor to break and, and uh, tear away even more. So I put this brace back in, I separated it from the old floor and uh, the uh, tabs on the end were sheared off which is pretty common so all I did is weld it back on. And then I just positioned this with the new body mount, the new body mount rubber and the bolt to hold it down. And then I put a floor jack underneath here and I just raised and lowered the cab until it all, everything lined up again where it was supposed to be. And I just plug welded it right to this panel. There's kind of a double uh, layer or thing going on. So I did, I plug welded the inner tabs and then there's an outer piece that goes around to kind of distribute the loads. So then I welded that on and uh, so that's all good and secure again, probably more secure than it ever was. Um, and that's how I did that. Now, if I didn't have this thing on the frame, how would I know what height to put this at? Well, you wouldn't. So uh, that's why I like to leave th these things on the frame, frame access my jig. If I pull this off the frame and then try to position this, I won't know where it's supposed to go. And these cabs, or any of these old car bodies, they flex quite a bit without the frame, even when they aren't rusty, but especially when they are rusty. So, and you're, you got, you're laying on the floor, you get the cab on the floor or what, on the rotisserie or whatever, and you're trying to weld all this back in. You don't know where it's supposed to be, and you don't know if the cab is twisted or not. And I mean, you could weld braces in the cab before you pull it off, but this cab was twisted before, so now you're just bracing together a twisted cab. So like, what's the point of that? So that's uh, that's my theory there. There are a couple welds that I'll have to finish once it comes off the frame. I can't quite get at them. I could get at them, but it's just easier when it's off the frame. So I'll do that. But uh, I think it's, to me, it's important to get as much of the structure as you can in uh, before you lift it off the frame. That way you've got a jig, you know, I mean, you could measure and level and square everything to death when it's off, but why do all that extra work when you've got something that's already level and square here? Obviously, I leveled the frame, then I leveled the cab on the frame. I got my level here, and I just checked it at a few different points to make sure it was level, and uh, that tells me all I need to know. The next step is to uh, get the floor in this side. And uh, so we got our blank cut out here. Uh, not too much is gonna happen here. It's a pretty simple panel. We've got to put a little recess in it with the bead roller. You see there's this little step here. So I gotta put that in. And we gotta do a little uh, indent for the body mount, uh, which is pretty simple. We're not gonna, we're not gonna overcomplicate any of this because there's no reason to. It's a floor, so who cares?
So this is the body mount hole and I need to create a recess because you can see this washer for the body mount is uh, shaped like that and it needs to sit more or less flush but right now it sits up about a quarter of an inch. So you can uh, make this as complicated or as simple as you want to make it. Uh, for me personally, I like to keep it as simple as possible. So all you really need to do this is you gotta remember this is a floor, so uh, it's gonna be getting covered with either a floor mat or a carpet of some kind. And it's also getting covered by this washer. So all you really need is a ball peen hammer and a sandbag. Oh, and a little bit of uh, suppressed uh, anger. in thing it's in quite nicely now good enough So that's about as far as we're going to take it for this episode. We got this all welded in. So that's all solid now. And we got our uh, lower post welded in. So we've got quite a bit of the structure rebuilt on this side now. You'll notice when I was welding both this in and this, I was just welding it in one continuous pass. Uh, this stuff is structural, so you know I want a solid, strong weld. Strength is the key here. I'm not going to warp an area this small. This is all pretty thick here. 
And same with the floor. You know, even if it does warp, it's getting covered up with everything anyways. I'm not spending a bunch of time finishing this out. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take grinder, knock off the high spot off the welds. And then just glorp in some seam sealer. And then uh, rocker guard it. And by the time all that's done, it'll have basically disappeared. And uh, that'll be just fine for what we're doing on this truck. Anyways, uh, next step here is to get this side to the stage of this side. This side is not as bad, but it's still, you can see it's still kind of collapsed and it's all goofy there. So I want to get that rebuilt uh, before I do any of this, uh, start doing the co cosmetic stuff uh, like this panel and the exterior panel. That's going to involve fitting the door. I saw a bunch of work to do here as well. There's supposed to be a brace that comes in here that had totally disintegrated. So I got to figure out what that looks like and then reconstruct that. I also need to find my a better hinge because obviously the hinge on the side was completely shot. I know I have some somewhere. I just don't know where they are, but uh, that's uh, another problem for another day. So we're going to get that rebuilt and then you can put all this back together. This should all be fairly straightforward other than fitting the door, which is going to usually, it, I, if I remember right, the door barely closed or, or opened on this side. So I got quite a bit of work to do there to make that all, all happy again. Also, unless you're completely daft, you probably figured out by now that uh, we're using this cab on the 48 GMC. Um, so in order to kind of make it a convincing uh, swap, I will have to graft in the cal vent on this side. And we're also gonna graft in the uh, five window windows into this cab. Um, this is uh, not something that I just kind of came up with overnight. Uh, I spent a lot of time trying to think of any way that I could save that uh, 48 cab and there was just nothing nothing doing there. Um, the original plan was to just take basically here and graft in the whole cowl, upper cowl, dash everything from this truck into that GMC and then just do the usual patches on the bottom. Um, obviously, I mean, the dash is gone on the, the GMC and these pillars are gone. It's gone above the windshield. Everything is just gone like right down here. So that was certainly a feasible plan. But then I uh, pulled the gas tank and everything and finished stripping down that GMC and found that the whole back was completely gone. Everything, the floor basically up to here uh the rear floor section all the inner structure back was had been hacked away um the back panel is rusted out basically up to here so at that point uh what do you do well um do i graft in from here up to basically here and use that much of the GMC cab, which is in worse shape than this. The back panel on this is actually pretty good uh, compared to the one on the GMC. So now I'm I'm welding garbage from into a better cab. And this cab isn't any treat either, but it's certainly far more repairable than that cab. So you know, it just does, there was nothing that uh, made sense there. Um, I feel like I shouldn't have to explain it that much, but I know somebody's still going to say, oh, you just got to do it like so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so could have fixed that and blah, blah, blah. Whatever, you know, sit on your computer and type your little heart out. Uh, you know, I'll just ignore you. Uh, you're not the one here that has to fix it. Um, this is also uses the four-point mounting system, which is a much better mount system anyway. So overall... Just uh, going to be a much better truck. There are some differences on the firewall as well. Some This has more body lines on it, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that too much. Uh, it's already a pretty gargantuan project to begin with. Um, you know, swapping the cabs, that's, uh, you know, the whole thing, the whole truck's got to come apart to do that. So 
certainly, uh, you know, this is the last resort here and not a decision that was made lightly. It's not all doom and gloom for the GMC cabin doors because I have a plan for that that involves a whole pile of cutting and welding and a bunch of my junk parts. So, uh, it'll all, everything gets reused and recycled and made into something here. Nothing's getting scrapped. It's just not good enough for what I want to do with this truck. But uh, anyways, uh, if you want to see more on this, uh, make sure you like and comment and subscribe and all that crap. And uh, you'll see a lot more on this truck in the future, whether you want to or not.